Wind generators harness the power of the wind to produce electricity. As the turbine's blades revolve, they drive a rotor that generates power. This can charge a set of batteries or even feed a transmission grid. Wind power is a renewable energy source that doesn't pollute. This type of wind generator is a recreational model designed to power a boat or a cottage with up to 500 watts of electricity. To make the propeller, they lay a template on a plank of western cedar, a rot-resistant wood that's flexible and durable, yet lightweight enough for the slightest breeze to set it spinning. After tracing, they drill a hole at each end and in the middle. Then remove the template and do a rough cut using a bandsaw. They put the template back in place, using those holes they drilled to align and secure it in place. Using a router this time, they do a precision cut. The plank of wood now has the contour of a propeller. The next step is to form the profile. To do that, they bolt the wood onto the right side of a specially designed device called a propeller carving machine. On the left side is a model propeller. After adjusting the model to the proper angle, they start to cut. As the machine's roller runs over the model, it guides the shaper to carve the wood exactly like the model. It takes about eight passes to get the propeller's profile just right. You can see the profile well, once they've marked and cut off the excess on the ends. One side is flat, while the other is curved, like an airplane's wing. Now they widen the hole in the middle of the propeller and sand off the ridges left by the carving using a low-pressure inflatable drum sander. It's the only type flexible enough to really get into the curves. Next, they check the balancing. Watch how a mere penny can throw off this perfect equilibrium. Finally, a coat of waterproof epoxy paint, the kind used on the hulls of boats. Now they assemble the alternator, the component that generates electricity when the propeller spins. They wrap insulation around what's called the proportional electronic regulator, and then install it, along with wiring, into the alternator's casing. This regulator controls the electrical charge and current. The propeller spins this rotor shaft, creating an electrical charge that sends a current from the alternator to the batteries. Once the casing's bolted shut, they mount a cooling fan on the shaft's protruding axle. This fan will expel the heat all that spinning generates. Next, they assemble the parts that make up what's called the lolly shaft, the axis on which the propeller sits. This axis enables the propeller to pivot toward the direction of the wind without twisting the wires that run to the batteries. Finally, they connect the wires from the lolly shaft to the alternator. This rubber cover protects the connection from the elements. Now they assemble what's called the propeller governor, a key component that prevents the propeller from overspinning and breaking down in high winds. When the propeller spins too fast, the centrifugal force pulls on these springs. This activates the braking flaps, generating drag to slow the propeller down. Again, precision balancing is critical, otherwise you'll have a damaging vibration. After applying the manufacturer's decal, they mount the propeller's rudder onto the back end of the wind generator's frame. On the other end, they install the alternator followed by the propeller and propeller governor, both painted black to protect the waterproof coating underneath from the sun's damaging UV rays.